Good afternoon and welcome to our Greenwich Apple Regional Training Centre webinar on Get Into Code with iPad Part 1. So there's an exciting follow up in, I think, a month's time. So something to look forward to. <clears throat> but just before we go any further, let's have some welcome and introductions. So Apple Regional Training Centres deliver courses to build the skills and confidence of educators to use Apple technology inside and outside the classroom. So we are a community who share best practice and inspire excellence through teaching with Apple technology. There are 70 or so Apple Regional Training Centres across the UK and Ireland, um, and we are one of them. So today, uh, these are the people who will be helping you learn about Swift Playground. So I'm Tim Lings, I'm Director of Digital Learning here at Heronsgate Primary School, and I'm joined by my colleague. Hi, I'm Andrew Barnshaw, a Year 2 teacher here at Heronsgate, part of the computing team. Super. So we are the Greenwich Apple Regional Training Centre based at Heronsgate Primary School. You can have a look at our website. There's some lists, a whole load of videos, or you can follow us on Twitter for latest updates. So today we are going to be looking at how to code on iPad using Swift Playgrounds in particular. There'll be a chance we'll be demoing stuff. There'll be a chance for you to have a go on your own iPad where you are right now. And there will be a chance to discuss and connect a little bit more and then finishing off looking at the Apple Teacher Learning Center. So this just to helps make a bit of sense about this session and how it links to the following session. So you can see here that there are um, the two webinars we're running, Get Into Code with iPad 1 and Get Into Code with iPad 2. And there are corresponding kind of sections of the puzzles guides we're gonna look at. So. Uh, commands, functions, for loops, variables, and conditional code, which should all hopefully make a little bit more sense once you've finished. So today we're going to be looking at commands, functions, and for loops. That's the kind of first half. And specifically, commands is what we're going to start off with. But before we do that, just to let you know what you'll need for today's session, you will need an iPad with Swift Playgrounds installed. So you, that could be the iPad that you are joining this meeting on, or perhaps you're on another computer to have an iPad handy. There is a book in the Books app that you can reference. Feel free to download the book at a future time, but we'll be referencing that. We are also requiring, a if you have a piece of paper, one of these. So if you haven't got a piece of paper, perhaps run to a printer, grab one. I don't know, find a child's piece of work. No, I'm joking. So you can find a blank piece of paper. And last of all, we'd really appreciate your contribution. So we've got a nice little green mic. So there might be some opportunities where you can come off mic and joining the discussion, maybe joining the chat. So just to help to help this session run really well, it'd be great if you're up for that, contributing your thoughts and everything. Um, so we'll be making use of these teacher guides and resources from Apple, the Everyone Can Code uh, curriculum resources they've made. There's a book called Everyone Can Code Puzzles, and then there's a teacher guide that cor corresponds with that that's kind of tells you a bit more, and that goes with the Swift Playgrounds app. So we'll be having a look at that. So some of the outcomes from this webinar will get you started in identifying using commands, functions, and for loops, help you learn some simple activities that you can use confidently with students. You're going to try out those skills in the Swift Playgrounds app, connect about how these relate to the curriculum, and then share your successes. But before we do that, we're going to have a little poll. So he says, find the poll button. Here we go. So the question is, what is your experience with using Swift Playgrounds on iPad? Okay, so answer away. Have you published an app on the App Store? Have you got yourself the Swift Playgrounds Apple Teacher badge? Have you had a good go at some of the Learn to Code Playgrounds? Have you opened the app once or twice? Or are you wondering what on earth is Swift Playgrounds? Good, well done. We've had 42% of participants participated in our poll. A few more seconds which is the answer that you think best sums up your situation. Okay, a few more seconds. And I think that's enough time. Everyone who wants to participate in the poll will have done so. So it was pretty evenly split between the, I don't know what sort of playgrounds is. I've perhaps opened it and well, I've had a good go. Okay, super. So uh, maybe oh, I need to click the share results. There we go. You should be able to see that now. So a bit of a split there between the bottom three, super. Okay, enough of the poll and on with the session. So uh, this is the Everyone Can Go Puzzles teacher guide, which we can have a look at in a second. And in here are some resources to help lead your learners through. 
So the kind of process they go through is learn. So you'll learn a coding concept. You will then try that coding concept within the app. You'll then apply it in a slightly different setting. And then you'll connect and think about how that applies to you and the students' lives. So before we introduce ourselves to commands, let me just show this book. So I'm opening up uh, Apple Books. And you can see here we've got Everyone Can Code Puzzles, the teacher guide. So I'm just going to open that. And in here, you've got an introduction which kind of talks you through how this book works along with the app. So you can download the app from there, how to use the book. So those four different ideas there, learn, try, apply, connect. So that's how the, each kind of section is structured. Um, so you're learning some with some activities to learn that skill. You're going to try it out with the app, thinking about how you're going to solve those coding challenges, apply those coding skills in a new context, and then connect in with everyday life. And then it breaks it up into different sections. So we've got commands, functions, and loops. So we're going to have a look at those four areas today. And as you go in, you have kind of the student version of the book where it just goes through with the different activities they'll complete. And then after that, you should find that there is a teacher guide which goes through it again and gives a bit more detail about how you might teach that. Okay, so let's hear what Mr. Steve Bunce has to say about commands. Hi, in this session, we're going to think about commands. Commands are instructions that you give to your computer or to other people. It's really important to be very clear with your commands. And in this session, we really want to focus on the children and the students being very precise with their instructions. So now it's time to follow commands. Listen carefully and away we go. Lovely, I love Steve Bunce. So there we go, he's an Apple professional learning specialist. He helped put together these slides and he's got his lovely um, animoji face there as well. Fantastic. Okay, so getting started, this is where we need you to open up that chat box and I want you to choose an everyday object. What are the instructions or commands you would give to use it? So just post in the chat the object, you can choose one of the objects off the screen or another object, and then what one command you might pop in. So me and Andrew, we're just gonna post some ideas and if you'd care to join us in the chat, feel free. So I think I'm gonna choose a guitar. What command would I have? Strum the C chord, lovely. Amazing. Oh, lovely. So we, you've chosen your object, you then need to choose what command you would give to it. So for example, me with the guitar, I've said strum the C chord, so you make the shape of the audio. Oh yeah, good, thank you. A book, hold it in your dominant hand, pick up the book, lovely. Oh no, this is, hang on, Katie's talking about a guitar. He's just saying, open the fridge door. Yep, good, open it up, have a lovely look. I think I know what the next instruction there is. Eat oh. everything in sight. That, that would be me for the fridge. Grab a bottle of milk. Whatever it is that you have, keep in your fridge. Eat everything inside. Thank you. Lovely. Yeah. Super. Okay, so you're starting to get the hang of that. What commands are? You're giving an instruction. And computers like instructions to be as clear as possible. So no kind of ambiguity. So that's what the first learn activity looking at commands is. It's a hide and seek activity where you ask children to hide a small object in or near the classroom and then give directions for someone to find the object. They can be a video recording or written instructions or a map. And then you swap instructions with a partner to see if you can find that hidden object. So I'll just show you. That is indeed what it looks like in the book. Here we go. So there's that first activity, um, hide and seek. Can you find an object? So we could send you all off hiding on a webinar, might not work so well. So instead, uh, with the offer of, can you give verbal commands to navigate from the canoe to find the treasure, the red X? So at this point, if you are feeling very brave and would like to volunteer to give some directions for this little guy in the canoe, how you would navigate him all the way to the red X, please do just take yourself off mute, introduce yourself, and then give us some instructions. I wonder if anyone's feeling super brave. Just give that a go. I can see you, Kezia. Okay, yeah, sorry. Um, so I'd say um, row two squares forward and then turn 
left, then row um, one, two, three squares up. There you are. Perfect. Very clear instructions. I think that could deserve a round of applause. If not, just perhaps an emoji round of applause. Here we go. I can't find a button, but if you've got one on there, you can give um, Kizia a round of applause. Thank you very much, Kizia, for joining in there. Lovely. So very simple. That was a very simple kind of speeded up version of that activity. But you can see how that would be a way that you could um, get the hang of that to explore the idea of giving commands, make sure the commands are nice and clear, that the, the computer's not going to be confused. And so rather than jumping straight into the app, you're going to have a go at that. OK, next up would be try. So this is where you've, you're getting the idea of commands, and then you're going to use some commands in the app. So this is where you could refer to the Everyone Can Code Puzzles book. And it's got some suggested levels to try with a little orange tick on the side, which we'll look at in a second. So this is what the app looks like. We'll have a go in a second. You open up the Playgrounds app and it asks you to download a Playground. So I'll show you how to get to the Learn to Code 1 one. And then it talks you through what commands are, as we've had a little bit of an introduction already. And then you can have a go at solving a puzzle. So I'm just going to model one of them and then we can all have a go. So a quick little demo. So I'm going to open up the Swift Playgrounds app and I'm already in it. That's a bit confusing for everyone. So when you open it up, it will look like this, but probably won't have any playgrounds open. And you can it download an existing playground at the bottom. If you tap see all, it shows them all. And then you might need to scroll along here at the top and you want the one that says learn to code one. So if you have an iPad at this point, please do just tap that get button to just download it while we're waiting, but we've already got it. So we're happy, I'll put it here, okay. So whilst that's downloading, I'm just gonna show you the first few levels. So as I open it up, it starts with the introduction commands. So I can just tap through. Have you ever followed a recipe to bake something delicious? Why, yes, I have. Or followed instructions to assemble something cool, like a cool drone. I haven't actually made a drone, but I have followed instructions. So you need to follow the instructions in the correct order or you'll end up with something unexpected. I bet they didn't put the, they didn't screw that on properly. Same with computers. And now we move on to writing code that allows you to create your own set of instructions for your device to carry out. Your goal is to figure out which instructions in which order will result in something great. So in this app, you'll write commands to move a character called Byte. There he is, the little funny orange guy with a blue head performing tasks. So for example, you tell him to move forwards or collect a gem. That's important to note. And notice here, so it's now starting to teach you Swift. So perhaps I haven't explained this. Swift is a language that Apple have developed that they use in all their apps and developers use to build iPad, iPhone, Mac apps. And you're learning real code here. So they're suggesting that you can write the way that the code is written is what's called camel case, where the, the words are mashed together and you kind of break them up with capital letters. So collect gem and there's some brackets at the end. And then it says start coding. So this is what the screen looks like. And it's going to have some lovely music, which possibly might be enough. Let's see. So it's just going to load up. I'm just going to turn off the music. Lovely as it is, so that you can hear my voice instead. So it's on the left, it's got some instructions about what to do. And on the right, we have our little 3D world. I can move it around with my finger. I can, thanks, Byte. I can pinch to zoom in to really get a hang of what I'm doing. And you can see here, you've got this character. And then there's some steps he could take to get to a gem. So my goal is to use Swift commands to tell Byte to move and collect a gem. My character loves gems, but can't do it alone. So I need to write Swift commands to move Byte across the world. So number one, look for the gem in the puzzle world. Yep, found it. Enter the correct combination of move forward and collect gem commands. So those are the commands and press run my code. So I tap or it says tap to enter code. And I can start typing there. And if you notice at the bottom, the commands appear. Now I could make my keyboard appear and I could literally type it in, but instead it's got these shortcuts with the code, which is really handy. Something here to note, if the screen ever goes wrong and you need to think, reset things, if you tap on the three dots here in the middle, you can start page over and it basically resets the page. Perhaps you can try the code again or perhaps something's gone a little bit wrong, just so you always know you can get back to the start. So I'm gonna think, I think I need to move forward one, two, three times. So I literally tap, move forward three times. And then I tap collect gem. And you can see here, you've got code. So it looks like computer code, but actually it's a bit like blocks. And in fact, I can tap on it and move it around. 
as if it was a block of code. So this is a really nice way that it uh, takes you the next step beyond things like um, Scratch or um, other apps that use block-based coding. Okay, good, let's give it a go. Maybe we some background music. Congratulations on my first line of code. And then it moves on. Okay, now at the top here, you also can navigate left and right between pages, or you can go along here and you can see here, you've got a tick on that first one. Great. So at this point, it's going to be over to you to have a little try. But before I do that, let me just, here are some useful things that you can do to help solve your problems is you can always take a screenshot on your iPad and use the markup tools to kind of plan out what the route is, where you might go. That's a useful thing you could do. And there are more suggestions like that in the teacher guide. So your challenge now is to try opening up Swift Playgrounds, having a go, at issuing commands, adding a new command and toggling a switch. So we've got three minutes. And what I might do here, I haven't told Andrew I might do this, but he can copy if he wants. I'm gonna do a bit of split screen magic here. So we've got a timer on the left. And while you have your three minutes to play, I might just be playing along at the same time. Feel free if you get stuck or you have any questions to just come off mute and ask away. But okay, so you have three minutes starting now to have a try at those levels. So have a go. Um, and whilst you're doing that, I might just have a go at some of them too. So, oh, add a new command. Where is it? Oh, I can turn left. This looks good. So I might as well walk forward. Do, 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 and then turn left. Mm. Let's have a go. Move forwards, move forwards. And then let's try that code. Let's see what happens. Oh, he didn't get the gem. I think I didn't put collect gem at the end. So I can run my code again. Here we go. There he is. He's got it. Great job. Um, a few things of note. When you're running the code, you can make it run a little bit faster as well. I'll try that on the next screen. Toggling a switch. So here, our goal is to collect a gem, then toggle a switch. Oh, it's getting more complicated. Let's have a look. Oh, it's quite a complicated little route I've got to take. So it's teaching me about toggles. But if they're off, I can turn them on. If they're on, I can turn them off. So I reckon I need to go forwards, forwards. I'm going to do that. And I'll just turn left, move forwards, and I'm going to collect that gem. Maybe I'll try what that's like and I'll run really fast to see if I've got that first bit right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. So I'm doing good so far. Let's keep adding to my code. Move forwards, turn left, move forwards, move forwards. And then I'm standing on the switch. So if I toggle it, is that going to work? Let's have a try. Amazing, lovely. So I'll just leave you with another 40 seconds, see if you can finish some of those levels. Yeah, I think I've broken my time. I think time's up, people. <laughs> Super, okay. So um, after we've had a go at trying out and uh, our coding, you can then apply it. So here in Everyone Can Code Puzzles, there is a way that you can download a different playground, which has got this funny little dancing robot that you can just program it and it dances. So it's not trying to solve a puzzle, but you're trying to just create a set of dance moves. So let me just show you what that looks like in the book. So we go along, there's a bit more detail here about how you might solve some of these puzzles. 
and you can apply it with the me bot um, so you can add some basic dance moves so that's a nice way to take those the idea of giving commands but explore it with a much more open-ended activity and then the last thing that would happen is that you've got connect so this is a way of thinking about how that connects in with real life so you could um, collect information let me read what it actually says so connect is thinking about um, how you might use code wider so thinking about where else in your house you might have code so perhaps in a microwave or in your smart speaker or other things like this so there's just different activities that you can complete to kind of think about coding how it applies into the rest of life great so we've done commands and we're now moving on to functions at this point i'm going to stop sharing my screen and hand over to andrew okay let's get my ipad shared There we go. Excellent. Um, now, just for us, I'm a year two teacher, and I've, I've actually not used Swift before, other than when I downloaded it yesterday and had a little play with it. And at first, this app was a bit daunting, but the more you play with it, the more familiar you get with it. So if you're feeling a bit worried at the moment, don't worry, because the more you get to get used to it, the easier it becomes. Um, so as Tim said, I'm going to be taking us through the functions section. I'm going to go through the introduction, composing a new behavior, creating a new function and nesting patterns. Now, functions are really cool because they are a way of grouping commands together, which saves a bit of time and it makes your code a little bit cleaner, a bit, bit less messy as well. So let me take us to the book here. Let's have a look. Oh, here we go. Ah, let's go to Swift, let's click it open. I'm gonna go to introduction. So functions, as I said, they're a way of grouping tasks together. So every day you perform a range of tasks automatically without thinking about what you're doing. Even a simple task like tying your shoe uh, took time to automate. You learn to do it using a sequence of steps. And each step could be like a command. So you put one, one lace over the other, tie it together, make the bunny loops. And all together, that would become a function. So loop, swoop. Pull. So in program, a function allows you to name a set of commands, which you can then run anytime you want. So bringing these three commands together, you would make the function tie my shoe. And to define a function, use F-U-N-C, func, so function, with a chosen name. Uh, and you always follow a function with the parentheses open and closed. So give your function its behavior by adding commands inside the curly brackets. After you define your function, call it by its name to run its commands. Start code and so let's have a go. So this is composing a new behavior. Let's, where's our little island here? Tapped it into code. I'm gonna also turn the music off, as fun as that is. Okay, so let's see what we need to do here. Now, I, I like the idea that Tim mentioned by taking a screenshot and annotating. I think I'm okay for this one here. So I can see I need to go one, two, three steps forward. Now, I can see on the screen here I need to turn right, but I don't have a turn right function. So I'm going to need to create that function by using multiple commands. Now, they say three wrongs make a right, but in this case, I think three lefts is going to make a right. That would then leave me facing the correct way for the gem. And then I need to go one, two, three steps forward and then collect gem. Let's run this code. And speed that up as well. Super. So by combining the three left turns, I enable my character to turn right, even though there was no command for that. So that's called composition, where you combine existing code to complete a new task. All right, let's have a look at the next page here. So this is moving on to creating a new function, which is just the third point there. So creating a new function. Now this certainly looks a little more complex. I just like to spin it around, get my head around what I need to do. Here. Okay, so I can see I need to Press down on another one of those little tabs there. Great. So 
In the previous puzzle, we turned right only once using three left turns, it wasn't a big problem. But if we needed to turn right more than once, which looking at this puzzle, I think we do, it's gonna be more efficient to put those turns, put the three left turns together inside a function, thus creating the turn right function. So let's have a go at doing that. So see inside of the function between the curly brackets, there we go. So add commands to function. I know that three lefts are gonna make that right. So then at the bottom of the page, at the bottom of the iPad here, bottom page here, we've got turn right now. So let's start coding our bright where to go. So I can see I need to go forward one, then left, then right. Okay. I'm not going to put in all the code at once because I want to see where I'm at because this is a this is a way because there's going to be lots of commands here, lots of function commands. I'm just going to do a few, see where it gets me, and then go from the beginning again. So let's go forward, then left, forward, then right, forward, and then right and forward. Now that should get me to that little portal. Let's see. You can see as it's turning right, it's using the function I've made there to make the three left turns. And again, okay. super. Okay, so I'm going to see what I need to do from here now. I can see I need to turn right, forward one, left, forward one, right, forward one left and then one two three four forwards a left and a forward okay so let's do that let's do a turn right forward turn left forward now similar to with the collecting the gems we need to toggle the switch so i'm going to toggle switch turn right forward turn left and then one two three four forwards one, two, three four and then turn, oh no, turn left, oh, I don't need to do any of this. I think the other switch is already toggled, you only got one right. to go across. I was just doing Save extra. yourself a job. That's right, let's go all the way back here. I did that intentionally so I could show you how you delete code you don't need, of course. The consumer professional. There you go. Let's run code from the beginning, let's see it in action. Let's go run by fastest. Excellent. So I put in a load of unnecessary code and I'll show you how to delete it. Of course, intentionally. Great. Let's go to the next page now. We are, what are we moving on to next? We're going to nesting patterns. Let's find nesting patterns here. Okay, great. So up now, we need to, the functions we've defined have only called existing commands such as move forward and collect gem. It doesn't have to be this way. Either. The function turn around directs your character to turn around and face the opposite direction. You can call this function inside another function, solve stare, and call solve stare in your code to solve bigger parts of the puzzle. Excellent. So we've got a function here, turn around, which is left, left, which will get to turn around. Super. Let's do solve stare. Okay. So if I put in here. Oh no. I put in here, move forward, collect gem, turn around, move forward. That should get me back to the back to the middle. Let's see. I didn't finish the level, but it got me back to the middle. So I can see once I've done that function. I need to turn left to go to the next gem. Okay, so let's have a go at doing that. You wouldn't believe it, but I did practice this level before. I feel, oh, no, there we go. So that I'm happy with. So under here, under solve, oh, oh, this is really painful, that keyboard. Oh, there we go. I'm going to do turn left. So then that will get me to turn left. And I'm going to do solve stare again. Left, solve stare, left, solve stare. 
Okay, let's see if this completes the level. Excellent. So I just want to talk to you a little bit of what I've done there. I feel like I rambled a bit. It's hard to concentrate and explain, but the function turnaround is two left turns. So that's putting two commands in a function to turn around. And the solve stair is to jump up, collect a gem, and get back to the middle. Now, it would have taken a, a far more commands to do that four times over. So within instead of doing instead of typing that code in multiple times, I've used the solve stair for four times and just added in a turn left so it's facing the correct way. Which, as it said, is an incredible job. I've broken a large problem into smaller, more manageable pieces. And this process is called decomposition. Combining functions to solve a big problem is called composition. Congratulations, you'll become a great problem solver. Excellent. So, as I said, I've only had this app for maybe 48 hours and I'm already feeling far more confident than I was at the beginning. But now we're going to hand it over to you to have a go yourself. So, we're going to give you six minutes to have a go at composing a new behavior, creating a new function, and nesting patterns. Um, whenever you're ready, off we go. Okay, I hope you have all had an opportunity to have a go at all of those or one or two of those. Um, I'm going to hand back over to Tim now. We actually missed out the beginning part looking at the introduction to functions, but having tried it out on the app, this will hopefully make a lot more sense. So here's Steve Bunce explaining functions. We're going to think about functions. Functions are a series of commands that you put together. So for example, if you were tying your shoelaces, you might say, pick up each shoelace, cross them over, turn them around, and all those different instructions. And you don't want to have to do it many times. You can simply say, I would like you to tie your shoelaces. It saves us time and makes our code more efficient. There we go, saving time, making it more efficient. So one way that you could start thinking about um, functions is thinking of the way that you could break up um, a, a common task that you might give someone. So for example, we've already thought about tying your shoelace, but here we have commands for brushing your teeth. So I wonder if you just wanna pop in the chat, what are the steps you might need for brushing your teeth? Let's see who can get there first. So I'm just going to type something here myself. Oh, turn on the tap, definitely important part of those, that sequence. So it's thinking about what are the steps that you need and then how could you shorten that to just go and brush your teeth and then the person knows all the steps that you might need for that. So that's just getting you thinking about functions. And we could, if this wasn't on Zoom, have a try at uh, doing some origami as a way of exploring a function because actually here is a whole set of sequences that put together to make something. So there is a little video that we might watch a little bit of. This is where you need your piece of paper. So we might just have a little, have a little feel of this. Um, we won't watch the whole thing, it's 10 minutes long. Perhaps you're not up for a 10 minute origami session, maybe, but it's all on YouTube if you need it. So we're just gonna watch a little bit of this origami video with Steve again. It's gonna work, yes. Hello. Welcome to our unplugged part of the session. We call this unplugged because we're not going to use any technology in this part. What we're actually going to use is paper. So what you'll need is we're going to take a piece of paper and we're going to cut this into a square. Okay, so get your piece of paper and you can cut it into a square. To do that, what you can do is you can fold the page over all the way up to the side until it's nice and square. I give that go. And when that reaches the side, you can flatten that out. Okay. And when you've done that, when you fold that go like that, you can cut across here, knowing that that's a square. Okay, so we can say, let's get rid of that bit. You could use a paper cutter, or you could use scissors. The idea being is we want a nice, neat square to start with. Okay. So with our piece of paper, we're going to cut off this piece so we've got just a square left. Okay? So, here I have my square, which I'm going to use today. But what are we going to use it for? 
Well, today we're thinking about algorithms and about the steps you would take to do something. And following instructions is really important. So what we're going to make is one of these. This is a little paper dancer and you can see arms up, arms down, both arms down, one leg up and two legs up. Okay. So it's a way of making a little animated character by drawing on the pages. We've folded the pages. And the character I've got on this on here is actually Byte. And we're going to be meeting Byte soon in the Swift Playgrounds. Okay, so here's Byte, arms up, arms down, arm up, down, arm down. We're going to make one like that, okay? So let's have a look. I shall put you over there, Byte. Here is our piece of paper. So what we're going to do to start with is And so that could carry on. So if you if you are teaching this with a class, there are those kind of activities that you could do, just exploring a sequence of commands that you use to complete a task and how you might break them down into kind of sub commands. So um, always worth doing. If we were in a room together, that might be quite a fun little thing to do, but I think on Zoom, less so. Okay, I'm just gonna skip forwards to um, how you might then connect afterwards. So you've gone through the level, you've gone through making your origami, and then you could think about were there any repeated commands in your paper folding function? There are ways you could combine it to make it more efficiently and how that could apply to other subject areas. So all these things are just useful. A lot of the coding is about the thought processes, not just how to solve something in a map. Great, okay, so the last part we're gonna look at today is for loops. So we've done commands, functions, and now for loops. So here's Steve again, let's find out what for loops are. In this session, we're going to think about for loops. For loops are repeats, where you might repeat a series of commands many times. This makes things easy for us because we don't have to type out the instructions every single time. We can just say, do that, and I'd like you to repeat that maybe four times. So they save us time and energy and make our code more efficient. So again, all of this is about making things easier. And if you've just done the commands with kids, as the levels get longer, it becomes just increasingly laborious to make byte move around the levels. And so you want to make things a little bit more efficient. So I wonder if anyone can spot the song um, on the screen and post it in the chat. What is a song with the repeated actions? So fastest fingers first, who can post it in the chat first? What is this song? I know, I know, you know, Mr. Barnshaw. I was wondering, anyone else can guess what the, the song with the repeated actions? Ah, uh, thank you, Miss. Thank you, Kezia. Yep, so heads, shoulders, knees, and toes. Um, nice repeated action song there. So that, if you think about it, there's all kinds of loops that go on in a song like that. And here we've got um, a little pattern here. And I wonder if anyone can tell me if there are any repeated patterns here. This isn't the most immediately obvious. There's kind of different ways that you could um, bring out a repeated pattern. I wonder if anyone wants to just come off mute now and just share with us what they think some of the patterns might be on this screen. Anyone feel like they could contribute? I, 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 I'm still having a headache with this. I think mm. our unicorn cat, right? That's got to be one. Yeah. You can spot that one. Because that repeats on the first line twice, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. So maybe if you wrote a function called our unicorn cat. Yeah. You could then loop that. You could take what we've learned already. But definitely, is a lot of coding is about spotting those patterns and thinking about how you can make something more efficient. Katie, you've come off chat. Did you have anything you wanted to share? Um, yeah, with the loop, would you just do it for like in an infinite amount for the owl unicorn cat because it stops obviously after the second line and then goes to a different line of a different pattern? Um, is a great question. I think the way Swift works, you probably wouldn't want to end up with an infinite loop because it just you never get past it. So you just kind of say how many times it repeats. So then you've got the owl cat, the three owls and the cat. So is it, and then, but then is the end meant to be two owls? Mm, is the beginning is one question. owl? Because definitely there's there's a repeated 
like in a sense the first two line the first line repeats the second line yeah we are looped or and then the bottom line is kind of you could split it in half and loop that twice oh yeah i see yeah so, so there's yeah. there's different ways to break up the coding in different ways mm. always good for thinking these things so again those are some ways that you could um as you learn about it so the activity suggested in the book is to just spot and photograph loops that you might come across in real life or to come up with a list as of many um games you can think of with repeated patterns etc so it's always trying to think about repeated items and where you might see that everywhere and after then that we try it out in the app so i'm now going to do that so let's go back to swift playgrounds and now we are in we've done functions without in four loops so we're going to go to introduction here hopefully this will work so all about repeating yourself imagine someone planting seeds in a garden you want to give them some help and they might say oh i've skipped ahead sorry they might say for each of these four seeds make a hole place a seed move five inches forward so there's that loop and you're repeating it to write a for loop, use four and include the number of times the loop will run. For each seed in one dot dot dot, dot four, make a whole place of seed move five inches forward. So that's the way that it gets structured. And it has to appear within the curly braces for it to run. And then it just does each of the commands, but it just does it four times. And see here, it's just running through that code so we can see what's going on. And that's how you plant a row of four flowers. Fabulous. So we're now going to have a try at that. We're not planting flowers. Instead, we're with bite. And this challenge is to, we're going to enter the solution for one row inside the curly braces, and then we're going to decide how many times we repeat. So here we've got um, bite walking along. He's going to go along. I'm trying to get a good view here. It's quite hard, let me zoom out a little bit. So he's going to move forwards um, and then collect the gem. And then there's that little teleport at the end. So what we could do is we could just say that we're going to run this once just to kind of see how that feels and then just enter some code here. So I reckon it's move forwards, move forwards, collect gem, move forwards. Should we try that? Move forwards, move forwards, collect gem, move forwards. So let's just give that a go. We're going to run it. So it's going to run it once. Uh, there we go, he goes forwards, he collects that gem, he moves forwards, and then he teleports to the other side. So that's quite a convenient way to do, repeat that. And then I can see that actually there was one, two, three, four, five rows. So actually it's four I in one dot, dot, dot. We're going to put a five here because we're saying it's going to repeat it five times. So everything in that curly brackets, it's going to repeat. We try that. Da, da, da. It moves forwards, collects the gem, does that. Let's just speed this up. We go. We run a bit faster. So it goes along. That's now on the third time, now on the fourth time, now on the fifth time. And look at that. So we've, rather than having to type that all in, because that would be pretty long, we've had a go at using a loop. And what's quite nice is in the teacher guide here, this is the student guide, so we're on loops. It shows us. Um, what would happen if you try to write that out? Oh, hello. Let's try that again, here we go. So you can see one solution is you literally just type it all out. And that's one way you could do it. You don't have to use any loops at all. So you're using one loop, one very long loop of just, but a more elegant solution is solution two, which is what we did. And actually some children will just go for the brute force approach. You might see this way that children are still count on their fingers because they've not kind of used a more elegant solution or you can start to make use of that power and both of them will work but one of them is definitely more elegant than the other so we can go on to the next page which is looping all the sides so here we've got a set of commands but we need to figure out how to use some loops with this. So again, you could solve this puzzle by just literally typing that in again, because this current commands, it just does one side, doesn't it? Let's try it out. So it moves forward, collects that gem, moves forward, moves forward, moves forward, turn right. And you could just think, oh, well, I just carry on solving my puzzle and just tap all the commands in again. Or you could think, can I use 
four. So I'm following my instructions. Select four in the shortcut bar. Here we go. And then it says to add a four loop. Press the bottom curly brace to select the loop. Press and hold the curly brace and drag it forwards to drag it to include it. So I'm tapping on it here and I can literally drag it down. Aha! So my little bit of code here is now inside my for loop and there's four sides. So I'm going to do four. And so now I can solve the whole thing. There we go. So he goes along. And then what's quite nice, I'm just going to stop it, is that you can. Um, step through the code this just shows you what's going on so you can see that here we go it's following each command and then it's going back to the top again because it's doing the loop the second time so this is a really helpful way to do debugging is that you can see what's going on but also it helps just make sense of it oh is that keys here with your hand up did you want to just come off mute and ask a question um, yeah, sorry, I missed it. How do you step through the code? You just tap on the little dots. Yes, yeah, so you see here on the left of the, um, let me just stop that. So here, there's that little timer button. So you can make it run, run my code, run faster, run fastest. But if you tap step through code, or in fact, step slowly, it then highlights it as it goes down. And does that make sense? So I yeah, thank you. Early, so it does it even slower just going to move along really slowly but just so you can really see what's happening just to kind of because because with debugging sometimes it can be hard to quite know exactly what's gone on what's gone wrong and this just helps you really see it's operating this is doing this command that command and then you can see where things aren't happening the way you expect good so i reckon we could do a bit of time we've done a demo why don't you have a go? You've got three minutes. See if you can you have a go at those two levels using loops and looping all the sides. And just be sure you can do them. And do pop your hand up or come up if you've got any questions. So you've got three minutes. Off you go. Super. OK, so as I explained, you've got this teacher guide that gives you kind of a bit more of an insight into what the, some of the challenges you might face teaching it and how you can help guide students through. Um, so yeah, that's us. We've learned commands, functions, for loops. If you want to join us for Get Into Code with iPad 2, you'll learn about variables and conditional code, which is going to get pretty epic. But if, so, and if you are on the Twitter, feel free to um, tweet about what we've been doing. There's hashtag AppleRTC. And if you are an Apple teacher and you want to take that further, there is actually some extra resources that you can complete to do with Swift Playground. So if you visit appleteacher.apple.com, you can earn an Apple Teacher Swift Playgrounds badge. So I'm just going to quickly show you that. So I'm going to visit, oh, hello, not safe for internet, appleteacher.apple.com, which now you can access without having to, um, to sign in. So you just sign in to get your badges, but you can, do lesson integration. Here we go. You can learn a bit more about. Yeah, you can earn your Swift Playground badges. So you need to sign in to get this. But you first of all become an Apple teacher, explore the resources, and then you can take your quizzes and earn your badges. So I do suggest that you actually do complete all the resources first because it does get quite epic as it goes along. But that's just a kind of might be a good challenge for you to get your head around Swift and really feel like you know what you're doing with that. So we've got part two of this on Thursday, the 10th of March, which I think is actually three weeks, not a month, but not long. No, it is a month, exactly a month, four weeks. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and we hope to see you at a future webinar. So um, yeah, we hope to see you on the next one. It's great. Thank you for your time. Thanks very much.